In Nicola Sturgeon's time as Scotland's first minister, there have been four prime ministers. Today, she took aim at the latest one. The prime minister's justification is that she is going for growth. Conference, let me tell you what kind of growth that will be. Growth in the gap between rich and poor. Growth in the rates of poverty. Growth in the pressure on our NHS and other public services. And without any doubt, growth in the deep disgust that the public feel for all of it. Over the past few days in Aberdeen, the SNP has also been figuring out how to deal with the rising threat from Labour. Nicola Sturgeon seems to have found her answer, Brexit. Bluntly, they are willing to chuck Scotland under Boris Johnson's Brexit bus to get the keys to Downing Street. As ever, though, in this arena, the biggest applause lines were for, well, you know what. That, my friends, we need Scotland's independence. Nicola Sturgeon hopes her words here will resonate beyond this hall to those Scottish voters still unconvinced by the case for independence. She's trying to inject energy into that debate, but she knows that whether an independence referendum will happen next year, as she hopes, is out of her hands. Among the devotees, there's not much doubt. Do you think there's going to be a referendum next year? There will be. Referendum next year? Aye, go for it. But all that's in the hands of the Supreme Court. The Scottish and UK governments go head to head tomorrow in an historic case over who holds the power to call a vote. Yeah. I'll definitely end the ref next year. Yeah. Cool. From powers to energy, in the UK fossil fuel capital came a telling shift. Nicola Sturgeon promised a new economic case for independence, based no longer on North Sea oil, but on Scotland's renewable resources. A promise without detail. They're following, we're told, next week. Would this renewable energy be publicly owned? The First Minister didn't say. Her energy secretary did. Don't you think people who vote for the SNP want ownership of that incredible resource? Well, yeah, we want to. That's what we Rather want. Rather than we, passing it off to BP and Shell and all yeah, the other royal giants. So what we want to do, and this is because right now, uh, you know, in Scotland, we don't have the powers to do that. But an independent country will be able to do exactly that. Tricky issues, notably unaddressed, include the question of currency after independence. There was talk of EU trade. EU membership, they'll be back inside the world's biggest single market. But not cross-border UK trade, worth far, far more to the Scottish economy. And overall, the economic language was cautious. Her critics, of course, say it would be a disaster. Independence is not a miracle economic cure. But let this message ring out today. We can do better than this. We can do so much better than this. It's not going to be instant riches, is it? There are tough times that we face today in the United Kingdom because of the failure of United Kingdom economic and fiscal policy. And what we've got to do is take the decisions that are right for Scotland and build independence from that. And that's what the opportunity of independence is all about. Nicola Sturgeon said independence would have challenges, but so does government. And as opponents accuse her of taking her eye off the ball, she's trying to win the arguments over the present and the future of Scotland.